What is up, Earth's mightiest subscribers? It's Ernie, Blur Without Fear. Welcome back to the channel. Real quick, just want to point out that I have this mic in front of me because I had some audio issues on the last one and I just got kind of tired of it. So I just wanted to go ahead and use the mic. That I know actually works, takes a lot of extra effort, maybe an extra five minutes out of my day to move this over here and then another five minutes to move it back over into the exact spot where I usually like it at my desk, but it doesn't matter because we are here to talk about Wolverine. And I know in the last video I talked about Wolverine, I was like, oh man, poo poo on Wolverine, it's dog shit, I don't like it. Uh, I, didn't, I don't even know if I really even use those exact words. I can't physically throw up in my mouth. But in Return of Wolverine number four, I was clearly not a fan. But as it turns out, Return of Wolverine number five has come out as did Wolverine Infinity Watch number one, and I gotta admit, I got turned around. But before we get started, it only takes two clicks to become one of Earth's mightiest subscribers. Click, click. Okay, so Return of Wolverine number four by Charles Soule, and Steve McNiven is back on penciling duties for this one. Uh, there was something that was going on. He had some other prior commitments, which is why uh, I think for issues number three and four, he was absent, which, you know, whatever. Hey, it's the business. You gotta do what you gotta do. In this book, you know, we, we see that Wolverine has gone to the space station where Persephone is. Only, surprise, surprise, she's actually not there. Now, I gotta admit, this is annoying to me, but I also can't be mad at it because you know what? Villains, and this is not just in comics, but in TV shows, in wrestling, soap operas, uh, plays, dramas, whatever you want to call it, the bad guys usually aren't very bright and do things that undermine their plans. Well, this actually was probably the smarter thing that Persephone could have done. It's here that we actually learn the full nature of how she brought back Wolverine. We learn all about her a little bit more, I would rather say, about her plan, her delusions of grandeur, and this is where we learn that, yes, she brought back Wolverine as a drone. Yes, he was a drone no different than the Omega Red that she had, uh, no different than Prism, no different than Graydon Creed, no different than Lady Death Strikes Father, Lord Darkwind, no different than how she did Dakin or Dakin or Dakin. I don't care. Which is why when we saw him in the hunt for Wolverine one shot, that's why we saw him there when he was popping his claws and just sitting there, just you know, kind of in this trance-like state and just was just doing whatever. He was running around, he was killing people left and right and just doing someone else's bidding. That is because he in fact then was a drone. He had no autonomy, no agency, no nothing. But here's the thing, miraculously, and this is the one time, I think since I've been doing videos of Wolverine, because everybody's always like, oh, it's Healing Factor. Oh, it's Healing Factor. Oh, it's Healing Factor. It's Healing Factor fixes this. Healing Factor fixes that. It's healing Factor can, can cure world peace and all this other shit. For once, you could say that and you would be right. Wolverine's Healing Factor kicked in and actually pretty much cured him of the whole drone status. And this is why Persephone is so fixated on him because he basically overcame something that she hasn't been able to figure out. Like her whole thing is death and of course also rebirth because you gotta remember it's, her name is Persephone because you know she spent six months uh, or so in hell or Tartarus or Hades, depending on you know which part of the Greek myth you read. And she also spent six months on earth so there you go you got that so you know it's not always about death with her but she can only bring back people in so many ways and it takes a lot of effort for her to make people as lifelike as you know what we even saw in anna and even then she had no agency she was literally just doing what persephone told her to do because she was already dead so the fact that wolverine could even come back at all and have complete autonomy over herself this blew her mind now we also learn that her plan is to pretty much wipe humanity out and start over like she has gotten her people the best the brightest she's pulling a trump here and hopefully none of them will be fired anytime soon she has got them all together she's brought them together the uh the doctor who we met in the return of wolverine number one who died the anti-extinction specialist he was a part of that group and apparently he's one of the people who just wasn't down for it but she has brought these people up to her special space station where wolverine is she has basically got this idea that yes she's gonna have all these people create all these technological advancements all these scientific advancements all 
all these things. And what she's gonna do is all the people down below, they are sheep. She is what she's gonna do. She has an EMP set up that is basically set up to wipe mines. It's set to mine white people and essentially kill them and basically have them ripe to become drones. And then she can create a world without government, a utopia as it were. But yeah, we always know how that works out. And as you'd probably guess, Wolverine doesn't want any part of this plan. And of course, knowing that she's not there, I mean, he does still technically try to kill her, but just it's, that part's kind of weird. She tries to kill him instead. It doesn't really work out. She just merely winds up hurting him. And he ends up getting knocked out of the space station and somehow ends up, you know, hanging on with by sheer strength of claws alone and gets himself back into the ship. And this is where he pretty much comes in. And this is, this is probably the best part of the book because this is where Wolverine is actually more Wolverine than any other time we've probably seen him up to this point. Wolverine, he gets back in the ship and he just basically starts telling people, look, y'all can call the guards and you know set off the alarm you do whatever you want to do but at the end of the day i have come to run fades i have come to dog walk persephone wherever she is with the ship and i have come to basically just fuck shit up and if you call the guards you may or may not live most likely won't live to see me do what I'm about to do. And like any smart people, they actually get on board. Some of them talk a little greasy while they're doing what they want to do, but they basically shut down all the satellites that are going to be able to pull off the move, this coup that Persephone's trying to do. There's only one problem. They've wiped out Persephone's ability to, to mind wipe and kill all of Earth's population, but the space station they're in is still capable of at least wiping whatever is directly underneath it, which would result in millions of deaths, which Wolverine, for a man who's killed a lot of people, is not down for. Thing is, Persephone, she has control of the ship. The people he has, you know, hostage, they can't do anything about it. So he has to go up and find the, the, the master override control because every villain's space station has one and he has to go tear it up. So when Wolverine decides he's going to tear apart the space station with his bare hands, what he does is he decides that, you know, the only way I'm gonna get this done is if I unleash all of my memories. A prison where all the memories in, in, inside of his mind are hidden. He hits the master switch, lets all of them out. We're talking about every single memory he's ever had. Patch, X-Force, Wolverine, Weapon X Wolverine. You name a Wolverine and it is back and he has every last single memory he has ever had in life. The only thing he didn't let out was the savage berserker rage version you know, of his memories he the uh, that one the one that actually unleashes the hot claws he left that motherfucker where he was you know where he was at he was like you know what i'm done with you i will say this is a plot point that will probably come back later because this memory lets him know he ain't going away quietly he will always be here there there's going to be some comeuppance so expect that and of course persephone warns him that what he's doing is a mistake she says that you are not going to stop me i will be back and i mean yeah that part's kind of cool and i do appreciate how she's like you never know who i you know could wind up being next i could take over the body of just about anybody i will haunt you for the rest of your days and of course wolverine being a person once again who's killed a lot of people he says fine i can live with it and he destroys the space station falls down to earth through the earth's atmosphere burned to a crisp and he winds up you know surviving that because of course he did and he's wolverine i mean he's not gonna die again yeah so quickly I mean they did only have four years between one of his last deaths and the one he's just now coming back from but neither here nor there but anyways he makes his way back to the X mansion and it's here that return of Wolverine comes to its conclusion with Wolverine having come back to the X mansion the doors of the X mansion being opened up to him by a character we do not quite know the name of yet or who the identity of yet but i'm gonna go ahead and tell you now we are gonna get to that in the next video i decided to split these two videos up because i didn't want to waste time talking about one thing and then leading to another thing i'd like to try and keep these videos relatively short and you know hey gotta milk that content cow oh! Oh! Oh, yes! Yes! Oh! Check back in for the next video. By the time this video is up, the next video I will probably release either later that same day or the next day. Either way, you're going to be getting a little more videos from me this week just because of everything that's going on right now. Return of Wolverine started off great. I think it ended great. And I think like out of the five issues of it, there were maybe two or three good issues and maybe one and a half bad issues. <laughs> and I know a lot of people shit on Return of Wolverine as a whole, but I'm not going to damn an entire five part miniseries 
for one and a half uh, to two issues. And it's one of those things. I mean, honestly, it just it happens. Sometimes you get that sloppy middle. Sometimes you get that sloppy start. Sometimes you get that sloppy ending. <laughs> I only really get upset if it's all the way around. If it's sloppy at the beginning, the middle, and the end, that's when the that's when my pitchforks come out. If it's sloppy at the beginning, but it's pretty good or okay or great the rest of the way, you know, or vice versa, yeah, sure, whatever. I'm, I'm down with that. Anyways, let me know what you thought about Return of Wolverine number five. Sound off in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, Hulk smash that like button. And if you want to see more awesome videos like this one, make sure you click subscribe so you can become one of Earth's mightiest subscribers and tap that bell so you know when I post up. And if you want to become one of Earth's mightiest patrons as well, swing on over by patreon.com forward slash blur without fear. And if you're chucking a buck, you can get some exclusive content. And if you don't want to become one of Earth's mightiest patrons, that's fine too. Hey, all I ask is that you like this video and share it with your friends. And who knows, maybe they'll become some of Earth's mightiest subscribers too. Anyways, thank you for taking the time to watch this video and while you're here, go ahead and check out some of these other videos I got floating around here. But until next time, PLUS ULTRA!